Hello everyone and welcome back to What Matters. I bet you all can't wait for Mondays, the easing of lockdown goes that extra little step further and we can go into beer gardens now, etc. So, I bet you can't wait for that and I'll just get into the news stories for this week. Got some big stories as you may have heard throughout the week. So, here we go. On Monday, you've heard of TikTok and bottle flipping, but the new latest craze seems to be croquet. Croquet, croquet, it's a bit like scone or scone, however you want to say it. As the new season begins, Chichester and Fishbone Cricket Club say they have been inundated with requests for memberships over the last year and want to attract younger players. There's about 200 clubs in the UK and interest in the sport is growing following a boom in sales of garden cricket croquette sets. Which is pretty cool. Wasn't not personally for me, but if you're into that sort of thing, then fair enough. On Tuesday, actor Paul Ritter, who played Martin Goodman in the popular Channel 4 comedy Friday Night, Friday Night Dinner, has died after a brain tumour at the age of 54. Very sad, this. He also starred in the Sky drama Chernobyl, played Eldred Warple in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and appeared in James Bond's Quantum of Solace. Such a range of act, um, a range of actors um, and characters he's played such a such a talented actor robert popper who's friday night's dinner writer and creator tweeted saying devastated at this terribly sad news paul was a lovely wonderful human being kind funny super caring and the greatest actor i've ever worked with and trust me he's worked on quite a few things so that's some um real you know real real words there on wednesday on the same day the american moderna vaccine is approved in the uk and the blood clots associated with the astrazeneca vaccine are acknowledged with the drugs regulator saying the side effects are extremely rare but still under 30s will be offered an alternative jab but more to come out on that soon Andy Green, a Betfred punter, wins a three-year high court battle after he was denied a £1.7 million jackpot on blackjack after the system glitched. The judge ruled in Andy Green's favour, saying the company had no grounds for withholding the payment. Following the end of this lengthy case, Mr Green said he wished he'd never won as his physical and mental health took a toll. But hey, what a win, you know. Um, not only a win on the money, but a win with the court. So congratulations to him and I hope he enjoys the money. On Thursday, as a follow-up to last Saturday's story, I can sadly confirm that Richard Oroka Jeehee's body has been found in a pond in Essex. The 19-year-old's case will now go to the Independent Office for Police Conduct to see if any further involvement is required looking into the handling of the case. After the first missing persons report was filed on the 22nd of March, Mr Orokaji's mother said the police did nothing. His mother also said her son was struggling to cope with his business and IT degree, but the post-mortem shows no evidence of physical trauma or assault. His death is currently being treated as unexplained and further tests are being carried out to establish the cause of death. It's an incredibly sad story and an unexplained case with much more for the police to do and my thoughts um, go out to his family and all those involved because it's a... It's a really, really tragic, tragic story. On Friday, the Queen's husband, Prince Philip, has died at the age of 99. If you haven't seen already, today um, it's all over the BBC News. It's, it's just, you know, patriarchy. It's just everywhere today. Um, the prince married uh, the prince married Princess Elizabeth in 1947, five years before she became queen, and he was the longest-serving royal consort in British history. In March, the Duke left hospital after a month-long stay for treatment and underwent a procedure for an existing heart condition. Guess he won't be able to present me and my group with our Gold DV award, but they don't really do that anymore anyway. But you know, it's a it's a sad death and it's a really historic day in uh, British history, I guess. So yeah. On Saturday, as the world begins to move away from petrol and diesel powered cars, there are questions over how the metal sort will be sourced for electric cars. One possibility is mining the deep ocean floor. However, campaigners are arming that this could have disastrous impacts for the marine biodiversity. These companies will be mining for polymetallic nodules, which contain cobalt, nickel, copper, and magnesium. It's argued they are more sustainable than earth mining as they simply sit on the ocean bed, so no drilling or blasting, you just gotta bring them up. The UN body, however, is still to decide whether this is a sustainable method of sourcing the requirements and the um, actual physical elements needed for electric cars. Right, and that is all the news for this week. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you all enjoy the sun, enjoy the easing of the lockdown, and I'll speak to you all next week.